Seiko Movement Sapphire Crystal Stainless Steel Case and Bracelet, $35. This thing is nuts. Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. It has been a while since I looked at a Pagani design on the channel. It has also been a while since I looked at a watch this affordable on the channel. The value for money on offer here is insane. I've said it once, I'll say it again, accurate and reliable Seiko movement, scratch proof sapphire crystal covering the dial, stainless steel case and bracelet with screw link adjustment, milled scissor clasp, 100 meters of water resistance, all for the princely sum of 34 US dollars and change. Now, there are obviously gonna be compromises at that price, and there are, I will tell you about them later. But this could very well be the best value watch of 2024. It could also be the best value watch that I've looked at over the last couple of years, to be honest. These are available in three different colors, a pale yellow, an ice blue, and a green. I went for the ice blue, all the same price, 34 bucks and change for the next eight days or so. I'll leave a link to the place where I got mine in the description of the video. And mine, by the way, arrived less than a week after I ordered it. Like I said, nuts. Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. All right, let's go and let's try and keep it fairly brief. It's a fairly simple watch. There's no need to spend 20 minutes on this one. I will give you the usual dimensions and specifications, etc., etc. Now this one is supplied on a bracelet. $35, pretty remarkable considering how little you've spent on the watch. However, your money is gonna be spread very thinly across all the different components and elements of this watch for that price. Bracelet is definitely one of the weaker elements. However, 20 mil between the lugs. I'm sure you, like me, have a bunch of 20 mil lug width straps in the house. So we're gonna dress it up, we're gonna dress it down, we're gonna make it look a bit more retro, we're gonna make it look a bit more modern all with a very quick strap fashion show halfway through the video. And there it is. That's not a bad looking watch for $35, is it? Perhaps a little bit lacking in character, but then again, you could turn that around and say it's inoffensive. It's a nice color, applied indices, good looking handset, all well proportioned, and it's an easy, easy watch to wear. I'll show you in just a second. So in terms of dimensions, this one is 38 mil in diameter, 11.7 mil thick with a 44.7 mil lug to lug. As noted, 20 mil between the lugs. There's a pretty decent taper on this oyster style bracelet down to 15 and a half, back up to 17 and a half at the clasp. As size for me, 120 grams exactly. 100 meters of water resistance from a screw down crown. That is a piece of double domed Sapphire crystal for 35 US dollars. And the movement, as I've said a couple of times, it's a Seiko, it's a VH31. And the case finish is far nicer than it has any right to be. High polish on the sides, you can see my camera and my smiling face there. But look, we've got a bit of linear brushing on the upper lug surfaces, even a little high polish chamfer on each of those lugs. And the fixed bezel has two different finishes to it. There's a high polish ring and there is a circular brush ring. Nicely integrated piece of sapphire crystal as well. I say it once again. $35. Screw down crown, Pagani design logo. Now, interestingly enough, it's just the logo on the dial. It's not the name as well. We're seeing this with more and more Paganis. I find that shield pretty, again, inoffensive. I think that is a good move on their part. The bracelet is okay. Considering a strap code will set you back at least $100 on its own, the fact that you get an entire watch head attached to this one for $35 is quite amazing. Oyster style reminds me of a vintage Rolex in that there's quite a lot of flex, particularly on that first link. At least it does have a female end link. Quite a lot of flex between all of those links and yeah, it's a little bit rattly as well. They are solid links, solid end links, screw links. I had no problem sizing the screws. I would recommend perhaps Loctite on these just to hold them in place if you are gonna be wearing this one as a daily. Now the clasp itself is small at 17 and a half in diameter. It's got the fold over. Again, the Pagani shield there, double security pusher. It's a pressed upper, but it's a milled scissor. 
Again, just remarkable how much watch you actually get here for how little money you've spent on it. Case back, it has one. It's made of stainless steel. It's screw on, it's shiny in some places, it's not shiny in other places. It's branded with Pagani Design's name, 100 meters of water resistance, the shield logo again in the middle, and the model number, the official model number, PD1731 at the bottom. Macro lens on then to have a look at the dial and hands and very little to complain about either materially or aesthetically. Now the VH61 movement by Seiko, if you didn't know, is a quartz. It's not a mechanical movement, it's a battery powered movement. But rather than ticking once per second, you can see it there, I'm sure, ticking four times per second. You'll get two years life from a battery, Batteries will cost you next to nothing to replace yourself when the time comes. This is a really, really low maintenance watch, therefore, plus or minus 15 seconds per month accuracy as well. So this one could sit in a drawer for weeks or months at a time or even years at a time, and it'll be ready for you when you're ready for it. High poly silver Dauphine hands with a bevel down the middle. There's a nice little bit of complexity to those applied indices as well. Batons all round, but double batons at the 12, the 3, the 6, and 9. The Pagani shield is applied. The only other text on the dial is 100 meters, 330 feet, confirming the depth rating and Japan movement either side of that bottom index. Printed minute track around the outer edge and a nice little granular pattern to the dial, just breaking up the light a little bit. One final touch, the second hand. It's a different shade of blue. Again, far, far nicer than this thing should be given the price. On wrist bracelet first, I've got a seven inch wrist for your reference. Nice and compact at 38 mil. I only had to remove two spare lengths, so bear that in mind. It probably only goes up to seven and three quarter inches, therefore. Then you're looking for more links from somewhere or you're putting it on a long strap. But nice and slim. Nicely balanced, nice weight, nice vintage taper. Three holes of micro adjust means you're probably gonna get a half decent fit with it, but it doesn't weigh an awful lot, 120 grams as discussed, so looser is better than tighter when a watch is lighter. Overhead legibility is okay. The silver Dauphine hands against the blue dial are all right. Probably if you want maximum legibility, go for the green dial. I think the green dial would be the most legible, the yellow dial would be the least legible, this blue one somewhere in the middle. That's the bracelet then, let's get it on those straps. Starting with the most formal looking of them, black leather full croc from Sydney's Artisan Straps. Is there a whiff of Grand Seiko about this color combination? A little bit of peacock dial with a black leather strap? Grand Seiko looks $35, dare I even say it? Or I always like pairing this shade of blue with a kind of caramel honey strap. I think the warm tones of the strap really bring out some nice hues to the dial. This one is from Hisili, the New York based micro brand and strap purveyor. Or what about a slightly darker brown? I'm pretty much a sucker for anything vintage style and cross stitched. This one from Strapify, another Australian brand company. Or what about a more modern look with a single pass NATO strap from Spring Made? You could put pretty much anything you wanted to on this one. Standard lug width, 20 mil and a fairly neutral watch head. Yeah, go crazy. I'm sure you've got plenty of 20 mils in your own box at home. I keep mine in a shoe box. That's how many I've got. So ridiculous value for money and clearly a lot to like about this one, but I'm still gonna complain about it because that is what I do. It's a cheap Pagani, so you were expecting the loom to be crap. You're right, the loom's crap. And as mentioned a couple of times, the bracelet is, yeah, definitely the weakest component. It feels rattly, it feels cheap, because it undoubtedly is. And I don't think it's a watch you'll find yourself staring at, mesmerized by its beauty for hours at a time, because yeah, it's a little bit nondescript. They've played very, very safe with the styling here. In some ways that's good, in some ways it has left the watch looking a little bit characterless, a little bit bland. But if bland is my biggest complaint about this thing for 35 US dollars, it's not that much of a complaint really, is it? Everything seems to be getting more expensive. Everything seems to be far more expensive than it was only five years ago, for example. So it is even more satisfying to come across a nugget of pure horological bargain gold like this one. They really don't come along all that often these days. So there you have it. If you want a super affordable daily or an occasional wear dress watch, a holiday watch, 
whatever really. This is far, far better than it has any right to be for $34 and change. The bracelet is definitely reminiscent of a vintage Rolex, but pop it on a leather strap and it looks really rather nice. But if $35 is just too much of a stretch for you, you can go lower if you want to. Click here or here to do just that. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. I'll see you again in the next one.